Life and Times at the Residential School by Elizabeth Chapman. I interviewed my cousin, Elder Sharon Flett. She comes from a small community called God's Lake Narrows in Manitoba. It's a remote reserve about four to 500 miles north of Winnipeg. It's southeast of Thompson, Manitoba, but close to the Ontario border. Population is about 2,000. The only way to travel up there is by plane. There are no roads leading to the community in the summer, but you can drive in the winter when they build a winter road. Elder Sharon talked about her life and times at residential school. I interviewed her November 15, 2010 at her residence. She felt comfortable at ease being in her own environment and wanted to learn about her experience at the school. She's now residing here in Winnipeg and has been for the past 30 to 50 years. First I asked Sharon how many years was she at the residential school. She said there were eight years. First she was in Norway House for five and then Bertel Manitoba for three. She was forcibly taken when she was eight years old, not knowing when she'd see her parents again. In Norway House, she stayed at a huge United Church building where her living quarters were in a large classroom. In Bertel, she also stayed in a large building where they had annexes, but she went to school about a mile away from her annex. Sharon and the other kids had to walk to the school every day. In the winter, on very cold days, they traveled by skidoo. They always remained in and around the school and never went out beyond it. I asked Sharon what her behavior was like in school and how they were disciplined. She said they were all well behaved and tried to go along with the other kids. They were very strict rules I had to follow. There was no talking in Cree amongst anyone. Also when the kids used to get out of hand or trouble they got straps and they were sent to bed very early. She said one time she got into trouble and the supervisor cut her hair as a punishment. The bigger and older girls picked on the younger girls and used to get them into trouble. I asked Sharon if there were doctors or nurses in the school, if she ever sought out medical attention. She said there were no staff on site, medical staff, and if somebody got really, really sick, they were taken to hospital or emergency for checkups and treatments. There were only supervisors in her school who, prescribed, who would give aspirins when a child got sick. She and the other kids were given cod liver oil every day for good health, but it made her sick to her stomach and she felt like throwing it back up. Other than that, she was pretty much in good health while at the school. Finally, I asked Sharon what kind of food was served and she ate three meals a day. She said they were served reg three regular meals but in small portions. They were mostly served porridge and bread every morning and fries with meat for lunch and supper. Sometimes there were desserts like fruit, cocktails and cookies. She said there were no snacks given between meals. She ate what was put in front of her and she used to go to bed hungry. She remembers her parents sent her a little bit of money in the canteen at the school, but the older girls managed to take her goodies away from her. Sharon and the younger girls were vulnerable and always getting picked on. I've learned Sharon went through hardships and difficult times at residential school. She was nervous, scared, and frightened little girl when separated from her parents. She was sent to receive a white education and she felt alone, lost, and powerless. She suffered alone not knowing about herself, her culture, or her language. But she had the courage to survive this change in her strangeness around her. I felt empathy and sadness because of it. I thought how cruel the supervisors must have been. They ignored the cries for help coming from vulnerable and fragile child like Sharon. I experienced her willpower, strength, and self-esteem through her eight years of pain at school. I wonder how this whole ordeal has affected her. I can only imagine. I'd like to thank Sharon for giving me the opportunity to interview her. She successfully answered what I needed to know about her times at residential school.